Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to USA Global TV and radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is the United Kitchens. We are in for a rare treat today as celebrity chef and certified nutritionist Ricky McKenna is cooking up something really delightful and delectable. Let's bring her out and welcome her to the show. Hello. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Nice to see you, chef. What are you cooking up today? Well, today, as I lean forward and play with the TV thing here, um, we're cooking up something that's really wonderful because it's great for those on diets, but who really want something that's filling. It is veggie and meatballs. The meatballs are together in the, the vegetables are in together with the meatballs. And so it's going to be a neat combination. We're making a great tomato sauce with all sorts of goodies in it to go on them. That's what we're doing. Fabulous. Well, before you start preparing that, I'm going to spotlight you. And for people, oh my goodness, excuse me, for people who are joining us for the first time, especially those on our new radio platforms, can you give a little bit about your background and how you got interested in having a career around food and fun? Oh, thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. Well, I am Ricky McKenna. Um, I'm a certified nutritionist for about 22, almost 23 years now. And I love to cook. I love food and I love entertaining. And about 22 years ago, I decided to go back to school and get my certification. And so since then, I have served people in industry, uh, corporations, uh, American Dietary Association, the um, United Healthcare, as well as individual clients and even little kids, because they really need to learn to eat well. By the time they're two, their their um, habits are set. So um, lots of years worth of um, schooling, and I still continue it because if you know anything about nutrition, something's always changing. So to keep up with everything, but to enjoy food is my main thrust and i have written a book it's yes you can eat well and eat right and it's on amazon it's in book uh, paperback form as well as in ebook form so help yourself to one please and i've spent the last 22 years not only helping people learn about food and what it does for you because it is the key to your health but really enjoying it and sharing it with anybody who come in the door. Wonderful. Well, I'm excited to watch you put together this beautiful work of art and uh, I will be here producing the show. So take it away. Thank you very much. And welcome to my kitchen. Um, today for the meatballs, uh, as I said, the vegetables are going in with the meatballs. So we're going to start with zucchini and we use, um, we have a couple of cups of zucchini. So I'm just going to chop it up roughly because it's going in the food processor so it works um, well in the meatballs. And these are gluten free for those people who have any concerns with gluten. And so I think you'll find that these are really good for people with some allergies or sensitivities, as in celiac, if you have any gluten problems. And the vegetables that we're using are really quite um, helpful for most people. Now, everybody's individually, biochemically individual, which is fine. And we're gonna take these two and put them in the food processor. The zucchini and the red pepper. And then we're going to add some yellow pepper and onion. 
and I've already put some of the onion in a measuring cup, but just for fun. I don't usually measure, but sometimes I do, because I find that intuitive cooking, which is what I do, um, is involved with doing what, adding the ingredients and using the things that you really love. For example, the recipe may call for um, two garlic cloves, which this one does for the sauce. But since we happen to be a family that likes garlic, sometimes I use three or maybe even four. And here's our onion going into the food processor. Now we're not going to process till it gets liquidy. We just want to process so we have the vegetables small enough to work with the, um, the chopped meat. And I'll show you that in just a second. We're going to make a little bit of noise here. Okay. Hang on. Stay with me. It only takes a couple of seconds. rubbing up a motorcycle when I do that, pulsing it. I'm going to make sure I get all of it in here. And it's in little tiny pieces right now, which is perfect for the meatballs. And we'll just give it one more little pulse. There we go. And so all those beautiful little vegetables were now turned into beautiful little tiny vegetables. Okay, and now we have a pound of ground turkey, which I've separated so that we can add the vegetables. And what happened to my spoon? Okay, we'll use a little fork. We're going to start putting the vegetables in there, mixing them right into the, tur the turkey, the ground turkey. And this time I got the 90% fat free or 90%. Yeah. Uh, I happen to like having the fat and the meats because it adds flavor. Now that's what we don't want to add in is part of the food processor. So we'll keep that up. And we'll take that out of the way. So I've got almost two cups of the veggies in there with a pound of the ground turkey, which I'm going to mix as thoroughly as possible. It's very colorful. And I'm also going to add some yellow pepper. You can add green pepper, whatever you delight in having. I prefer yellow and red. So we're going to chop up the, um, a bit of the yellow pepper as well and put that in there, not just for color, but for nutrition. And I'm just going to take a slice off the bottom here and chop that up a little finer than I did before. We can put it in the food processor all together with the other things, but we're just going to do it this way. So if you don't have a food processor, then you can just go ahead and do it this way. You could use a blender and just pulse it to get it to the smaller pieces. But we'll just give it a chop up here and we'll do it by hand because not everybody has a food processor. So, here we go. So we get it almost as, as much as we can, tiny diced, like the rest of the things that went through the, the food processor. And it's about half a cup of each of the vegetables, except for the zucchini, you use more. You use two cups of the zucchini, which is loaded with minerals and vitamins and really marvelous for you. So we'll just toss the yellow peppers in there as well. And we're going to mix those up. It's getting really pretty. It's kind of like confetti. It's beautiful. I think you can see it. And actually, in the meatballs, there's no garlic, but the garlic will be in the sauce that goes over it. So um, if you happen to have a sensitivity or an allergy to garlic, 
then you can use something else. There's an Ayurvedic spice called Hing, H-I-N-G, or it's also known as asafoetida. And don't ask me to spell it. Just do it phonetically. Asafoetida. And uh, I will measure the quinoa because that goes right in with everything else here. And it calls for a three quarters of a cup of quinoa. And this is already cooked. Quinoa is marvelously full of protein, about 40% protein, which makes it a wonderful non-grain for people who are gluten-free. And that should give us about three quarters of a cup. And we'll go ahead and mix that in. So what you're doing by mixing in the quinoa is not only aerating the meat, which sometimes will stick together if you've ever cooked, just cooked um, plain ground meat, particularly turkey, it tends to stick together in the pan. So this is in there not only for the protein, which helps it give it more protein. Nutritionally, it's fabulous. And it aerates and it keeps it from sticking to the pan. But of course, we're going to bake these. So I preheated my oven to 400. Now, um, I had a question about putting these in just in, on a pan, in a pan on the uh, range. And the reason I would not do that is because there's so much juice in these that you'll end up with a pan full of juice and you won't be able to separate the meatballs. And it's interesting because the recipe specified do not separate them. I know if you've ever done meatballs before, you've taken them and you've put them so that there's space between them, or especially if you make cookies, so they don't become one big cookie. Well, in this case, you do put the meatballs kind of side by side, and we're going to add an egg. And that's usually good, whether you're doing turkey or beef or whatever kind of um, ground meat that you're using, whether it's chicken, turkey, or beef. And I believe that you can also do this with chicken because there are some people who have sensitivities to turkey meat. And I find it interesting as a nutritionist to find out all the different sensitivities and allergies that people have. And one of the things that I've discovered in my years of training is that much of the sensitivities and the allergies uh, and the um, propensities toward not being able to eat certain foods is in the gut. So if you're having problems, I suggest you consult with your health practitioner and find out where the problem is actually started. And it's usually the root of the problems is usually in the gut or the microbiome, which is where we have zillions, millions and zillions of bacteria that are there for a good reason because they're supposed to digest your food so that you can use it. Okay, the next thing we're going to put in is some finely chopped carrot. And so I'm going to split my carrots in half, make it easier to chop them, and then again in half. So we're quartering them lengthwise and chopping them as finely as possible. Now you probably could use the processor for this as well, but actually what it called for was chop these up by hand. So we're getting chunkier pieces of carrot to put in. So as you can see, we're going to have meatballs loaded with vegetables, which gives you a full meal. And the only thing you have to do on top is put the sauce. So here we go. And it does call for, I think, a whole cup of carrots. Um, no, half a cup. We'll take this as half a cup. That's enough. And you can use your judgment on these things. You don't have to be precise. The only place I find that you really have to be precise when I'm cooking is in baking. Because certain things won't work properly if you don't use the right amount of baking soda or baking powder. And so you have to be way more precise with your ingredients in baking. But with something like this, 
feel free to interpret. And if you don't like carrots, use something else or leave them out. Now, this is the most amazing to me. We've got lots of meatball property here. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little look into that. I think you can see how pretty that is. All the different colors that are in there. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Thank you. I also want to say hello to someone who is watching from Vienna, Christine Amy Artner. Thanks for joining us. Ah, welcome. Thank you for coming into my kitchen. Now we're going to add, it calls, the, the recipe actually calls for Worcestershire. But since I don't have any Worcestershire, and here's something that you can do. If in your kitchen you don't have one of the precise ingredients that goes into something like this, I'm using a, bar a barbecue sauce that actually has coffee. It's espresso coffee, and it smells delicious. So what I'm going to do is use a tablespoon of that in place of the Worcestershire sauce. And I'm telling you this so that when you do have, you get ready and you start making things and you don't have exactly the right amount of things or the right thing, you can substitute something else that you like. And this is Dijon mustard. And yesterday when I opened the mustard, it went flying. So I'm going to be really careful today because it calls for a tablespoon of the Dijon. And actually, I'm just going to squeeze. This is where you can have your kids help you and it's fun. Like, okay. I like to have fun in the kitchen, could you tell? So we're going to mix up the sauce and the mustard right into the meatballs. And this is where, oh, it's really beginning to smell great, even raw. This is where you can interpret and put in things that you like. And we'll put in a wee bit of sea salt because salt actually helps bring out the flavors in the foods. So I want to make sure I've got all that sauce mixed in thoroughly. Make sure you get to the bottom of things. And I did wash my hands before doing this. So we'll get a little bit of salt. About a teaspoon. And I'm not adding any pepper because we're going to put some red pepper into the sauce that goes on the meatballs. If you want to put pepper in, if you like pepper in your meatballs, go for it. Alrighty, I believe we have everything in there that's required. And now for the fun. As I said, we're going to bake them in the oven. So I've got a very, very lightly greased aluminum foil here. And we're going to, that's so they don't stick, but you don't want a lot of oil in the pan because it'll, everything will start floating. Remember that there's still some fat and some liquid in the meatball, so you don't want it all over the place. And make your meatball about an inch and a half in diameter. And we're just going to, Carefully put these on the baking tin. Just takes a couple of minutes. And you'll notice, I think you can see that I'm putting them right next to each other. If you want to make them a little bit bigger, that's fine. It'll just take a little bit longer for them to cook or to bake in the oven. And I'm just stacking them literally right next to each other. I'm using um, a spoon that's a serving spoon. It's a little bit larger than a, a large um, soup spoon. So I'm getting them there about an inch and a half in diameter. And some of them are a little smaller and some of them are a little bigger. If you feel like measuring, go for it. But I think this is just do it approximately and for whatever makes you feel good. There's also an alternative. You can take this wonderful mixture, and if you put it into a loaf pan, you can have meatloaf this way, and it will be a very juicy 
veggie filled meatloaf. So that all we're going to serve it with today is a little more quinoa and possibly a salad or actually what I would do to serve it for a meal is make some either roasted potatoes or roasted sweet potatoes to go along with the meatballs. Okay, we're almost there. So far I've got 12 lovely little meatballs. And we're going to go for about 16, I think. So you can serve anywhere from two to three to four meatballs per person, depending on the appetites and what you want to serve with them. And, uh, Dr. Jacqueline, is there, a, do we have any questions or comments? No, not yet. Oh, Anybody want to put any comments or questions? We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, please. I love questions. And if I have an answer, I'll give you an answer. Yep, we've got 16 beautiful meatballs here. And they're literally right next to each other. I'm going to spread them out just a hair there with no hair. And I think I can make two more. I'll just put those up at the end here. There we go. And if you will excuse me for two seconds, I'm going to wash my hands before I put that in the oven. Oop. Towel hit the floor. Okay, so we have 18 beautiful meatballs going into the oven. And my oven is at... 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be, um, I don't have the comparison, I'm sorry, for centigrade. So, now that that's in there, we're going to time that to a little over 15 minutes because there were more than I expected to make. So, I've got it on about 17 minutes. And I have here a bowl of chunky tomatoes. And I'm going to take a can of the of chunky tomatoes because I want to make them a little tinier. So I'm going to make them approximately crushed. And if you don't have the crushed tomatoes, what I do with the chunky tomatoes is pour the liquid in because this will be a sauce and it'll reduce in the pan. Take a very sharp knife, a small one, almost like a boning knife. And right in the can, you can start chopping up your tomatoes to make them smaller. This is a can of organic diced tomatoes. And they're pretty chunky, so I want them a little bit smaller. So I'm going to get in there and chop them up. So here's two things that you can do. If you don't have the exact ingredients, you can use a barbecue sauce in place of Worcestershire and add some different spices if you like. And we're going to just crush these little tomatoes and pour them in with the other can of chunky tomatoes. Because it calls for quite a bit of tomatoes. Yeah, that's better. A lot smaller. To make our sauce. Now for the fun, we're going to add some garlic to this and it calls for two cloves of garlic and I have two great big cloves of garlic that I'm going to chop finely. You can use a garlic press if you choose, which is great. What I find with the garlic press though is you don't get all of the garlic. There's a little more waste than I care to have unless you just want the insides and you want it more juicy when you're using it because the garlic press will produce more juice and that's fine there's plenty of liquid in this already though so i just want my garlic minced finely and please be careful of your fingers i'm using a really sharp knife which works a lot better than a dull one sharp knives do matter 
And if you have children who want to learn to cook, and my advice has been to get them in the kitchen as soon as possible. And both of my children and my grandchildren um, started their kids off in the kitchen on a ladder. They had their very own private ladder that got them up to the height on the counters where they could take a knife and they used the plastic knives they're, they're, or ceramic knives but they still are sharp and they were taught how to start cutting things when they were little, which is great. Okay, we've got the tomatoes and the garlic in there. And now we're gonna take our pan and we'll get over here in a second, Dr. Jacqueline. I'm just gonna put some olive oil in this lovely sided pan and you want a pan that has square sides because you're going to be mixing the sauce. Now you can take the garlic and put it in the pan and already um, start it cooking by itself but I prefer to put this in with the tomatoes so that we have it and it's, it's done that way instead. And I'm going to add two things to it in the, well, three things in the spice department. It calls for dried oregano. And I'm putting in approximately a teaspoon because we love oregano. And then I'm going to put in some ground fennel seed. And if you have fennel seed and it isn't ground, I take my coffee grinder that does finely grinding, and I put it in there to, ground, to grind it. And if you don't care for fennel, I would suggest using either more oregano or use thyme or rosemary, kind of give it an Italian flavor. So I'm gonna use a quarter teaspoon of the fennel, because we do like fennel and a teeny bit more. So now we have the tomatoes, the garlic, the fennel, and oregano. And I'm going to chop up some fresh basil and save the, um, if this is an option also, these are chili flakes or red pepper chili flakes. And I'm going to take my basil and I'm going to take out the little flowers because we don't need those in there. And if your basil has started to bolt, pull the flowers off. I usually take them off and let the seeds go right back into the ground. So I'm just going to chop the the um, basil up roughly, almost a chiffonade, but I really didn't. The chiffonade being the little skinny slices. I'm just going to give that a little bit more because this is going into the sauce. for measuring about a quarter of a cup and I would use a full cup. <laughs> I happen to love basil. So we're going to mix that all up and while the olive oil is heating, it would help if I turned it on, depending on your stove or range, please make sure that when you put all this goodies in it doesn't splash up. That's the thing I kind of worry about with some people. Now, we can use, um, actually that's all that goes in here, is the fresh basil, tomatoes, garlic, the fennel seed that's ground finely, and away we go. And we'll shift over here. I can do this. Let's see if this, it should work. There we go. And you can see the olive oil, is, it's about, it's just under a tablespoon of olive oil. But I think that's plenty in there because we have lots of juice. And I'm going to carefully pour that in. And we'll have our sauce start to bubble in a couple of minutes. And since this is a non-stick pan, I'm going to shift to my non-stick spoon so that I don't scrape the pan 
You can use a, a regular pen. It doesn't have to be a nonstick. Just make sure you can spread it out so that it has room to um, start bubbling all through it. I'm going to mix it up because the olive oil is spreading out a little bit more than I wanted it to. There we go. And mix all the ingredients thoroughly. Now, if you take the garlic and put it in first, let it get to the point where it's starting to brown. It just turns golden brown. It gets a little translucent and starts to turn golden brown. Then you can add the rest of your ingredients, the tomato, basil, and the fennel, and the, and the oregano. Now, I'm going to give it a taste shortly because I might like to have a little bit more oregano in there, but we'll see. And I'm going to add a little bit of fresh pepper. Here we go. We're going to start to bubble. Can everybody see the bubbles? Bubble, bubble, it's oil and fire. Yes, fire burn and don't burn the cauldron. <laughs> By the way, we do have a comment from someone on YouTube, and I'm not sure if they could please clarify. That would be great. It's uh, Kessel Reader. Dear, please check your email. So can you clarify, is this for Chef Ricky? Is this for USA Global TV? And... If you could just let us know, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, here we are back again. If I can do the camera. My engineer is not present at the moment, so I'm the engineer. Okay, do we have any questions so far? As I said, we can interpret as we feel and for the things that we really like individually or for our families, it's very good to interpret according to what your favorite tastes are. Now I'm going to take a spatter screen because this is bubbling and I'm just going to put the spatter screen on tops and leave it open because I want the sauce to reduce so that all the flavors really concentrate a little bit more. And so what I'd like to do while that is working for a couple of minutes, I believe at the beginning when we first got started, I mentioned something about low glycemic and good for people on diets the meatballs the only thing in there and you can use turkey i have a list of things that you can use and among them all are the carrots the vegetables have you can use everything from artichokes arugula asparagus bamboo shoots um, beets of course even the beetroot and just an aside with the beetroot, I love to roast them. I do not peel, I scrub. And that goes for beets, beetroot, um, any potatoes or sweet potatoes, anything like that, including carrots. I also scrub, I don't peel. And sometimes the carrots come out looking a little, not quite as if you, the same as, as if you peeled them. However, you still get all the good nourishment. And the reason we don't peel, especially things like potatoes and, and sweet potatoes, is because minerals and vitamins are concentrated in the skins. So I'd like you to get those as a nutritionist. You get the full benefit of the food that way. Unless you're doing something, if you're mashing the potatoes, you can still use um, even a, something like a Yukon Gold potato that has a thinner skin or just chop up those good old skins and put them in and you get some more texture in the mashed potatoes. Now, uh, as far as the rest of the vegetables, you can use things like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbages, carrots, cauliflower. And cauliflower now is being used very popularly for pizza crusts. So for those who are gluten-free, using the cauliflower crust, which you can purchase, or you can make them. They're fairly simple to make. Um, let's see, collard greens, high, high, high in mineral content, really good for you. And let me check my sauce here. Oh yeah, we're bubbling, excuse me. Do a little sauce check. Yeah. All right. Just give it a little swirl once in a while. I'll take a peek at the meatballs. Yep. 
when they cook, they don't spread out, but all the juices from them spread out. And they're very, very simple to get out individually. So don't worry about putting them together as I showed you. Okay. We've also got things like cucumber, eggplant, green beans, green peas, jicama. And if you're not familiar with jicama, it is a root vegetable that's shaped rather like this, kind of like an oval. And it is crunchy. You peel it, it's white, and it is full, chock full of juice. So you get, it's another juicy vegetable so that if you're not drinking enough water through glasses, you can get the juicy vegetables to help complement your water content. And um, of course, onions, mushrooms, and mushrooms, by the way, are a good source of vitamin D, as in daylight. <laughs> Um, romaine lettuce, spinach, turnips, turnips, I find turnips and rutabagas. When you're doing mashed potatoes, if you take a turnip, like if you've got three or four potatoes and one turnip, mash the turnip with the potatoes and find out what the flavors are. It's interesting flavor. Now, as far as the proteins, of course, it, if you're on a weight loss program, you can use, um, lean ground beef lean ground chicken, chicken breast, crab meat, eye of round, which is a beef cut, flank steak, which is a wonderful cut, very tasty, halibut, herring, lobster, mackerel, pork loin, salmon, sardines, shrimp, and tenderloins, and uh, tuna. One thing I want to say about sardines, sardines come from the ocean, of course, when you get them in cans, they're usually packed, which is where the um, expression comes, you know, about people being jammed into some place like sardines. Well, the sardines are carefully put in there after they're cleaned and cooked. And they are extremely high in omega-3s and protein. They're absolutely fabulous. And there's lots of things you could do with those little babies to make them taste great in a salad as well as if you get the larger ones, which are usually about six to eight inches long, you can saute them with lots of garlic, olive oil, oregano, whatever spices you like, and they're fabulous. Um, vegetables, everything from avocados, which are high in fat, but it's good fats. And so the avocado is one of my favorite vegetables or fruits, whatever you want to call it. Um, interesting because in the vegetables here, they've got almonds, oh, nuts and seeds. Almonds, cashews, chia seeds, very high in protein. Flax seeds, which are wonderful, if, grind them. Make sure you get them, if you buy them whole, make sure you grind them. Use your little coffee grinder before you use them, because that's the way you actually get to take great advantage of their something called mucilage, which helps to clean out your colon. I don't know if everybody bargained for all the nutritional information they're going to get today, but you're going to get it. Oh, yum. Smells good. I can show you how it's cooked down a little bit. It has reduced, which is beautiful. And our meatballs are almost ready. We're really simmering away here. You can see it. But you can see the liquid has reduced, which is fine. It is a sauce. And if I wanted to, I would take a um, either an immersion blender or even just an old-fashioned potato masher and squish some more of the tomatoes in here. But I think I'm just going to turn it down to low and let it simmer. And just to show you what this looks like when everything has finished, here's our meatballs with the sauce. Lovely. I can sit. And I'll show you inside. You're going to get a lot of the vegetables. Let me just cut one of the meatballs open so you can see it. It's like when you open a box from Tiffany's, it just keeps getting better. <laughs> Thank you. I like that. Can everybody see this? Yes. It continues way through. Um, let's see. You can see that the you can see the quinoa, you can see all the vegetables, so you get everything all in one fell soup, so to speak. 
I'm going to turn this off now and just let it sit here and simmer. And our meatballs should be done in about 30 seconds. And so the one thing that I'm going to do first is take about a quarter teaspoon of my um, the red pepper flakes, the chili pepper flakes, and add them now. So that's all you need is just a little teeny bit of those, unless, of course, you want this, the sauce to be a bit more peppery and spicy. Right on cue, our meatballs are finished. Now, of course, if your oven isn't as hot as mine is, it might take a little longer at 400 degrees than 15 minutes. So that's why I put it on to about 17. But the nice part about these and this recipe is that you can't really overcook the meatballs because of all the vegetables that continue to keep it moist and juicy in there. And so we'll take those out. Oh yeah. I'm gonna turn the oven off. Now, if you recall, I said there would be lots of juice. There is. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. If I can hold this for you. Let me close the oven. And this is why we put it whoops, all together. That was just a knife. You can see they're still, they're separate, but they are nicely cooked. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm going to put this that under happens. here. Oh, yeah. Okay, better the floor than my foot. And so I like to show you how pretty these meatballs are. They're so colorful and really pretty. The dishes come right up out of the pan, and I'm going to take those and put them in another dish because we have a gentleman here who's known as the hand who comes wandering down after the smells, <laughs> following the aromas from the kitchen. Here we go. They come just lift right out of there. There's no problem. And all of the fat and all of the juices are now in the pan here. So that's one of the reasons you use a uh, baking pan that has sides. You don't want them all over the place. So we've got three beautiful meatballs there. And I'm going to move that over. And you can serve, of course, as many or as a few as you like. And take our sauce. And everybody can see, isn't that yummy? And of course, you can use this sauce over a number of different things. If you like pasta, it's a wonderful chunky pasta sauce. It's a great tomato sauce to use with different flavors. And there we have it. Ta da! Meatballs and vegetables. Ta da! Can we see the hands? Uh, I think the hand is still upstairs. <laughs> okay. uh, he was quite busy this morning in his office. So what I want to do is cut the meatball open. I'm going to cut one of them so you can see again. There we go. There. Ta-da! Can you see this? Yes. Yeah. Fabulous. There we go. Yeah. And there. Oh, gosh. Does this smell good? I'll have to taste. So I'll grab a fork. Now, I would serve a little more of my quinoa with this, or you could do something like roasted potatoes if you wanted to add another starch. So nutritionally, this is a pretty balanced meal right now. Um, and if you add starch, you can use, as I said, pasta, or you can use rice, because it will definitely absorb and taste wonderful with the sauce. That's, you have a lot of choices to fill in with this or just as they are. I love choices. Choices are great. 
What's interesting, a couple of people mentioned about the fennel, and you really don't taste the fennel, but I think what it does is add another element of flavor to the sauce. That's a little different from what you would normally find in a tomato sauce. So for whatever that is worth, it's really yummy. And um, actually what would be nice with this is, would be a nice cold slice of avocado, a couple of slices, and um, a lovely glass of either Chianti, or if you prefer white, I would do a nice crisp, either Pinot Grigio or Sauvignon Blanc. And there we have it, meatballs and vegetables all together. Nicely done. Thank you. I'm just going to close that out and say hello to everybody. <laughs> Go ahead and say hello. Hi. I hope you enjoy this recipe with you, your family, or whole friends. Enjoy it. And it's something, by the way, I forgot this part. You can take these, let them cool down, and either refrigerate for a day or three, or actually you can freeze them. I would put them on a pan, cover them, seal them uh, tightly, and you can freeze them for future use. They will freeze with the vegetables, and they'll be very simple to reheat once you take them out of the freezer. So there's something you can prepare ahead of time for if you're having company, if you're having a party, however you want to do it. You can make them a little bit smaller. And I don't think they would survive very long if you put them in a, um, like a chafing dish for serving. If you put them in with the sauce, I think they might fall apart because there's so many vegetables in them. But they do hold together beautifully in the refrigerator. So... If you're going to serve them after they're frozen, I would reheat them in a pan that's a nonstick or just with a teeny bit of oil um, or even some tomato juice, just a little bit of it from the, the sauce, enough to moisten the pan so that nothing sticks. But they will reheat, cover them, and they should reheat from the freezer in about 15 minutes on a medium-high heat. So, oh. it helps. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was wondering if you could put them into a sauce if you already had a sauce made. Well, I'm afraid that they might fall apart. Right. That's the only thing. They're, they're pretty together, but once you start cutting them, they do come apart. They'll, they'll hold. I mean, here. I just cut that when it's on the fork. Mm -hmm. you can see it. So it's pretty together. But remember that they're going to be much juicier than a regular average meatball because of all the veggies in there. So hearty appetite, everybody, and thank you. Thank you, Ricky. What is your contact information and how can people purchase your book? Well, you can purchase my book on Amazon.com, wherever it may be here. If you go to Amazon and put in the title, yes, you can eat well and eat right. It pops right up there. And it's um, in the paperback, as I said. And there are pages in the paperback, by the way, just as a note where you can read the recipe that's in there. It contains over 30 recipes. And then you can put in your notes about what you prefer. So I've left room in the book for people to really personalize it. That's on Amazon. And you can reach me at rickyskitchen.net. No apostrophes, just R-I-C-K-I-S-K-I-T-C-H-E-N.net, as well as if you text me to 970-618-7607. And those are three ways that you can find me. All right. We know where to look for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And thank you. Well, Dr. Jacqueline, but tell us about your book, your latest book, because that's something that I'm going to purchase. Oh. I know that other people have purchased it, and I would like to read it. Well, thank you, Ricky. I appreciate that. Uh, my next book, I look for the visual. It's called Adversity to Awesome. And this is not the final book cover. We're, I just met with Red O'Loughlin, whom you know, uh, again today. I think I meet with him four times a week. But this book is actually a compilation of 12 chapters. Each chapter belongs to a different author. 
I have the first chapter about something that happened to me and each author has contributed their story of how they've overcome adversity to be awesome. And we are actually having a, a live book launch. The first time we've ever done this, a live book launch show. And that's on May the 4th. And we'll have a number of the authors featured there, whether they are live or on video. And we will be going for that number one best-selling uh, book status during yeah. that hour show. So thanks for asking about that. Yeah. And uh, as I say, we're going for number one in cookbooks. It is listed in cookbooks and other things because it's more than a cookbook. There's some hints in there. Um, actually, there's a recipe using food for a hair conditioner, as in. And it's really very interesting. It works. That is great. Yeah. Fabulous. That's among the other 30 something recipes. So uh, have a look on Amazon and you can look for it under my name as well, Ricky McKenna, and it should be easy to find. All right. Thank you. That was just our sound that we need to close out the show. So Ricky, thank you again for being here. Have a beautiful weekend and uh, thanks for whipping up this delicious meal. You as well. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you Bye. for being here. Bye now. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Our next show is coming up. It's The Listening Mentor featuring me and my guest, Caroline Hewer, joining us from London. She is the Harley Street stress expert. So do join us wherever you're watching us. If you're over on our YouTube channel, we'd love for you to just click subscribe so that you can become part of the USA Global TV and radio family. All right. Thanks so much. We'll be back momentarily. Bye.